G'day, it's Fugitive Australian journalist Shane Dowling from the website kangarooquarteraustralia.com. Now, on Saturday, the 27th of August 2022, I published an article in relation to Lachlan Murdoch suing Crikey. Now, as I say in the article, I have no doubt the Crikey lawsuit by Lachlan Murdoch is motivated by the fact that Fox News and its parent company in the US, Fox Corp, which is controlled by Lachlan and Rupert Murdoch, are currently being sued by two voting companies, uh, Dominican Voting Systems and Smartmatic who Fox News commentators accused of uh, rigging the election back in presidential election back in 2021. They claimed they rigged the election in favour of Joe Biden and Donald Trump lost it because of their vote rigging. So they're under huge press, pressure in the US where they're getting sued for, I think the total is about 4.3 billion US. A lot of money. And the Crikey article, which was published back in June, um, implied similar things so I think Lachlan has sued them to try and silence that issue so it can't be used in the court cases in the US. Now I make out the argument in the article and as you'll see in a minute uh, Lachlan Murdoch admitting in a 2017 interview they control the narrative of Fox News by stacking it with the uh, right wing uh, commentators. In the article and also in the title I accuse Lachlan Murdoch of being the world's best known online stalker of women and children. And I make that point because uh, it shows, if you look at the evidence, it shows Lachlan Murdoch and Rupert Murdoch instructing their journalists and commentators to attack women and children if they see that as being beneficial to their financial interests. Now, I specifically mentioned Grace Tame and Greta Thunberg. Now, Grace Tame was critical of the Prime Minister, embarrassed the Prime Minister, or former Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. And the Murdochs obviously see him as an asset because he handed over probably well north of $100 million to their companies. Probably looking at least $100 million uh, in JobKeeper alone. And then there was an infamous $40 million to Fox Sports to uh, publish more women's sports, and no one knows if they ever did it. Um, so they handed over a lot of public money to the News Corp, which is owned or controlled by uh, Lachlan Murdoch and Rupert Murdoch. So they've seen Grace Tame as a threat to their financial interests. So they get their journalists, Peter, like Peter Van Onsen, and the key uh, example I use in my article is uh, Andrew Bolt. I'll read out an article he published back in January. Now the article says, Toxic Tame shows Grace is no longer a virtue. I never expected class from Grace Tame. She was too young and thoughtless to handle being an Australian of the year. No, the real problem was her pathetic rudeness to Scott Morrison, is that it was cheered on by so many people, especially women. Time we talked about toxic femininity. Now, another example I give in the article is Peter Van Onselen attacking Grace Tame. Eventually he had to backpedal because other journalists called him out on it. And I use the example of uh, Andrew Bolt attacking uh, Greta Thunberg. He called her deeply disturbed in an article. So these are the sorts of attacks that aren't Andrew Bolt uh, having his own thought process and thinking, geez, I might attack these people. No, these are Andrew Bolton, Peter Van Onselen and plenty of others attacking people like Grace Tame and Greta Thunberg because, because Lachlan Murdoch and Rupert Murdoch uh, see them as a threat to their financial interests. They make a lot of money from the mining companies, for example, who advertise with them. And Greta Thunberg's an environmental activist, so they don't like her. And they don't like Grace Tame embarrassing you know, Scott Morrison. Now, the point about that is that's evidence of Lachlan Murdoch and Rupert Murdoch controlling what the journalists do and don't say, what, controlling what the commentators do and don't say, exactly like they would have done in the US. They would have sent word down the line, hey, let's run the vote rigging conspiracy because that'll get us heaps of viewers and we'll make a lot of money from the advertising. And that's the argument that Smartmatic and Dominican voting systems are going to be arguing in the US. So that's why they've attacked uh, Crikey, because Crikey ran a full-page ad in the New York Times calling uh, Lachlan Murdoch out, saying, OK, sue us then, for an article they published back in, uh, I think it was June 29th. He'd been threatening to sue him, and he hadn't done it. But when they ran the article in the New York Times, that sort of forced his hands, because Dominican and Smartmatic would have seen that, they would have become aware of it, and they potentially would have... Uh, use that in the lawsuit uh, against uh, Fox News and Fox Corp if Lachlan Murdoch didn't sue for defamation. 
they would have said, oh, look, he's not suing for defamation, he must be an admission, or something along those lines. So that's why they've sued Crikey. Now, I'm going to publish a video of Lachlan Murdoch from 2017 in an interview where he openly admitted that they run a certain agenda to uh, run a certain viewpoint to a certain audience. He said they're right wing and that's their business strategy to employ right wing uh, propagandists or he didn't use the word propagandists but right wing uh, commentators. And he admits they wouldn't employ someone from the left wing. So he's admitting they have agenda and also he admits that's their strategy which I guarantee you that video well, I'm about to play will be played at the defamation hearings by Dominican and Smartmatic maybe even played here at uh, the Crikey hearing if it goes well defamation hearing if it goes forward who knows Lachlan might pull it pull the pin Crikey might decide to settle who knows if it goes to full hearing well they might play this video but I can tell you now Dominican Smartmatic will be playing I can't believe that uh, it's a real gift for him for Lachlan Murdoch to be saying that on a video from this uh, interview in 2017 so I'll play it now for you so let's talk about Fox News a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Um, is Fox News fair and balanced? I, look, I think you've got to look at Fox News. Um, is, is the New York Times fair and balanced? Uh, and I think you've got to look at uh, the news organization and the opinion organization. And just like the New York Times has a, um, a news organization that writes uh, for, the, for the front page, uh, they also have an editorial board that writes their opinion pieces. And you know, one of the reasons why the New York Times is such a, a well-respected uh, newspaper and a, a very fine newspaper uh, is that you know, their, their opinion is also very strong. And, and there is there's clearly a, a direction, an opinion for, that speaks to their, their readers. And it's the same at Fox News. And so the news organization is a completely different um, uh, construct and reporting lines to the opinion pieces. Um, and I think, that's, I think that's appropriate for, for, for news. And, and what is the opinion section represent? Is this a, a Murdoch family view of the no, world? Yeah, no, look, it, it's, it's absolutely, there, there was a gap on the, you know, center right uh, of the market. And you know, a lot of the media serves the, the left or center left, you want to call it, uh, very well. There's a lot of competition there. Um, you know, Fox News has found, found a market in the, in, to, to, to the right and, and certainly in, in the opinion pieces. And that's, um, that's certainly the, that's the strategy. Although when you hear people refer to Fox News as, quote, state TV, how does that make you feel? Like, yeah, just, we're, we're, we're behind think, the right guy. Because I don't think that's true. I, I, I don't think that's true. And I, I don't think any media organization should be behind a, an individual, right? You can be behind um, ideals or concepts. You can be behind whether you think um, your viewers want lower taxes or you know, uh, higher employment. And there are certain things that, um, that you can, you can uh, um, principles. Uh, that your either your readers or, or that are important to your readers or, or your viewers that are important and should be important to the, the organization I, again particularly in the on the opinion side um, but you should never get behind an individual because indiv indiv in, in, individuals um, uh, can be fallible right so uh, and that, that's an important thing and I think if you look at Fox News across the whole Bay part and Fox News is now the only channel so I think 20 or 22 hours there's 20 hours live uh, in the 24-hour cycle, and you look at uh, Shepard Smith. I think you, can, you can't say that Shepard Smith uh, is, is, is behind the, the, the president. No, it's definitely a clear delineation yeah. there between the news and, and the op-ed. Um, the James, your brother, spoke last year, I think, about wanting a diversity of voices mm -hmm. on the networks. Mm -hmm. Would you ever hire a left-wing op-ed? Well, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think they would do well necessarily um, with, with so um, Rachel Maddow. Um, it would be bad for her and probably bad for us if we hired her. And we could, we could offer her all the money in the world. But, you know, I think she would lose her audience, which is a very strong audience. She'd work very hard to get at MSNBC, and, and good luck to her. Uh, she'd have a smaller audience on, on Fox News just because of, you know, the, the um, the, uh, the, you know, the, the nature of, 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 of our audience and what, and what they're interested in. So you've got to be careful with changing the format too much. And so there's Lachlan Murdoch admitting they have a strategy of right-wing uh, commentators. They wouldn't employ someone left-wing, so they, so they only want a certain viewpoint going out to the audience. And I think that's going to be very damning for them at their uh, trials, defamation trials in the U.S., now there's a whole lot more information in the article I published, so make sure you visit my website, Kangaroo Court of Australia, and read that article and click on the links.
And regular readers know I set up a Patreon account two weeks ago to help fund the continuance of the Kangaroo Court of Australia website and YouTube channel. And uh, it's currently sitting at 113 supporters with who have guaranteed $905 a month. I think it's a pretty good start after two weeks, but obviously I need to try and grow it up to approximately 1,000 supporters. That'd be great. Take on the world if we got to 1,000 supporters. So please uh, click on the button and donate. And please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, etc. Other than that, thank you for your time and have a good day.